our uh, first uh, presenter is Tanvi Verma, and uh, she will talk about augmenting decisions of taxi drivers through reinforcement learning for improving revenues. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about our work where we have used reinforcement learning to learn from real world taxi domain data set. So this is a joint work with Pradeep Varakantam, Sarit Kaus and Hong Chung Lau. Suppose you are a new taxi driver and you are looking for your next passenger. What will you do? Would you stay at the current location and wait for your customer or would you move to some other location? Also, what will you do to maximize your long term revenue? Um, uh, would you, uh, maybe would you prefer uh, uh, to go to some nearby location and uh, get a short distance trip or maybe you would prefer traveling to a longer distance to get, uh, get a longer distance trip. The same problem will be faced by taxi companies when they launch a driverless cars commercially where to move to maximize your long term revenue. So this provides the motivation for our work. A taxi is said to be cruising when it is in free state and is actively looking for passenger. So cruising requires making a sequence of decisions. For example, go to some location and if you are unable to find a uh, passenger, then wait for another five minutes and you, if you are still unable to get a passenger, then move to some other location. There is uncertainty in demand, both in terms of the quantity of the demand and destination of the demand. Reinforcements are well defined in the terms of fare and cost of the trip. And the goal is to maximize the long term revenue. So these characteristics of our problem make it ideal for uh, to use an RL approach, reinforcement learning approach. So these are our key con contributions. We, we provide a procedure to annotate the taxi trajectory data with the decisions taken by taxi driver. We employ reinforcement learning methods to learn from these annotated data. We also provide a dynamic state abstraction approach which further improves our learning. And at the end, we provide a method to use real world data set to evaluate our learned policy. So there are two streams of related work. The first one is taxi guidance system. So there are a number of work which focuses on maximizing revenue. Uh, for example, uh, guiding a taxi driver based on minimizing overall vacancy time or suggesting a route based on the expected travel time or suggesting him a parking location based on pickup probabilities. But most of these work uh, rely on heuristics to maximize the uh, revenue myopically. Whereas uh, for our work, we learn from the, uh, from the perspective of driver and we provide a formal learning method which consider long term revenue. Another uh, uh, stream of work, uh, related work is reinforcement learning, more specifically dynamic state abstraction. Dynamic state abstraction has been uh, researched by a number of researchers. For example, uh, states are clustered based on their va values of the state or states with same optimal actions are merged together. So for most of these approaches, action state remains constant. Whereas for our work, action state is correlated to the state space. Moreover, we provide an iterative method which updates the state abstraction based on the current learning. Let me first uh, explain about the uh, data set first. Uh, data is from a major taxi company from Singapore and it contains information about taxi logs. Uh, the logs have uh, location information of the taxi, taxi ID, driver ID and status of the taxi. <coughs> So status of the taxi tells us whether the taxi is serving a passenger or whether it's in free state and looking f actively looking for a passenger or maybe it's in offline state or the driver is taking a break and uh, the state is break. It also con contains uh, trip log information which has information about start and end locations of the trip, 
also information about duration and fare of the trip. So from the data set, we mine cruising trajectory of multiple drivers. A cruising trajectory starts when uh, the taxi uh, comes into from a non-free state, it comes into a free state and it ends when the taxi state again goes back to a non-free state. So a cruising tra trajectory might end with or without getting a trip. So maybe when a driver is looking for a passenger and suddenly he decides to take a break. So in this case, uh, there won't be any trip associated with the cruising trajectory. Now we want from uh, this uh, cruising trajectory, we want to determine what all decisions the driver made while he was cruising. Was he wandering uh, in, uh, in a location or did he had some mind in his, uh, did he has some location in his mind while he was traveling? So uh, the intuition is that if uh, at location A, he decided to move to location B, he would, cho he would choose a path which is close to the shortest path between these two points. So for example, here is a trajectory which started at A and ended at E. So we start with assuming that at the start of the trajectory itself, he decided to move to E. And then we compare the shortest path distance between these two points versus the, uh, the distance he traveled during the trajectory. So we see that this is not the case. So uh, we, uh, uh, we compute shortest path distance from the end of the location till for all the intermediate points on the trajectory. And we see that D is the point when he decided to move to E. Then we uh, perform the same step with the starting point as A and end point as D. And then we determine all the points where he decided to move to the next point. Now we uh, convert this information into activity graph of the driver. So activity graph can be thought as a directed graph where the nodes represent uh, decision points and the weight of the edges represents the distance tra traveled between the points. Additionally, the last uh, terminal node contains the information about the trip if the trajectory ended with getting a trip. So the spatial uh, temporal location of a taxi is represented as the state of the taxi. So we divide days into weekdays and weekend and we divide map into several zones and 24 hours of a day is divided into six unequal time intervals based on the traffic intensities. And if there are n number of zones, the number of actions available in each state is n. Stay in the current zone or move to the remaining n minus one zone. So this is how our action space is correlated with the state states, space. If we change the zone structure, then the number of uh, actions available in each state will also change. So from the activity graph, we convert it into a sequence of state action pairs with terminating at a terminal state. So because we have all the information available in the node, we compute the corresponding state of each node. And because at point A, he decided to move to point B, so the action is moved to zone of B. B. And then we compute the uh, corresponding cost of uh, transition from state A to state B. And this is the terminal state. So we can see that this is a sequence of state and the reward is received at the end of the state if uh, we could get a trip. So, uh, so we compute payoff of each state accent pair backwardly from the uh, terminal state. For example, the payoff of uh, state SC ZD is R minus C4 minus C3, where R is the uh, fare of the trip and C4 is the cost of, the, uh, of traveling the trip and C3 is the cost to travel between C and D. After uh, computing the payoff of each state action pair for multiple episodes, we use Monte Carlo method to compute the policy. So this is the algorithm to compute the policy using Monte Carlo method. We can see that the state Q value of a state action pair is computed by averaging the payoff of all the state actions seen in each in each episodes and then the optimal policy is the action which provides the maximum q value so we know uh, that our state uh, space would uh, affect our learning so is it sufficient to have uh, 
few large zones or we need to go more granular and have more number of zones. If zones are too big, it would increase the uncertainty in the outcome of the recommended actions. But whereas if zones are too small, then there we won't be having sufficient data to learn something meaningful from the data. So we need to maintain a balance between this uncertainty and the granularity. So we propose two methods to learn the zone structure. The first one is the static uh, method, which is done based on the number of training data available in each state. We start with high number of zones and then we keep, uh, keep merging nearby zones based on number of us uh, until that each zone has sufficient number of training data. The second way uh, is the dynamic uh, zone, uh, learning the zone stru structure which is based on Q value of the states. Uh, so in our work the Q value of a, of a state action pair is the expected uh, revenue you would earn if you are in state A and take action A state is S and take an action A. So it's uh, advantageous to have a zone structure which yields high Q values. Uh, so, uh, so we ba balance between this uncertainty and granularity by dividing zones based on Q values of corresponding states. For example, suppose in state S dash we take action A and uh, go to state S and uh, Z is the corresponding zone of state S. If we decide to divide zone Z into Z1 and Z2, then uh, the uh, Q values of state S would be affected because now, uh, now instead of S, we have two new states, S1 and S2. Also, the Q values of state S would, S dash would also be aff affected because now instead of having one action A, we have two new actions A1 and A2. So we have uh, approved in our paper that value of S dash either increases or remains the same. So we split the zones based on the values of uh, uh, state S and S1, uh, the new states S1 and S, S2. Uh, so we split the uh, zone if uh, the overall new value of the new state is greater than the uh, val value of uh, the original state also if the new optimal action is different than the original optimal action. Then we take a part of data, we start with few say four number of zones, we take a part of data and then we learn the corresponding values and then we iter iteratively see if it is advantageous to uh, divide the zones. And, uh, we do it until uh, we have uh, our zone structure has uh, uh, converged. Then again, we move on to the next part of the data and we follow the same steps until we have exhausted all the data set and we have a zone definition ready. For the experiment part, we uh, compare the revenue earned by our uh, learning agent with the top percentile revenue of the drivers. So if uh, the agent is uh, in uh, state S, we go and see in the data set that how many trips were available in that state and how many cruising drivers were present in that state and then we compute an assignment probability based on which we assign a trip the uh, which is present in the data set and uh, we assign a trip to the agent uh, based on the probability if we were unable to assign a trip to the agent then agent uh, follows the same policy I want to emphasize that when we compare the revenues of agent versus the real driver which is present in a data set, what we are doing is we are comparing the average revenue of the agent which, which we compute over multiple instances versus the best case revenue of the drivers which is a single instance present in the data set. So that case the real driver has some advantage in this com comparison. So now, now from the data set we co compute average uh, earnings of top 1 percentile, uh, top, top 5 percent, top 10 percent, top 20 percent of the drivers and the green one represents the uh, re revenue earned by the static learner and the maroon one is for the dynamic learner. So what we see that except one time period agent performs better than the top 10 percent of the real drivers. So specifically during early hours when the demand is very sparse, we, we see that the agent performs better than the best driver. And during peak hours, uh, 
we believe that because the demand is so high, whatever action you take, you end up getting a passenger. So performance is not that great. Uh, this is the performance with, uh, with respect to the top 500 driver for that particular time period. So we can see here also that the uh, okay. early morning hour, uh, our performance is better than the best driver, whereas the peak hour, uh, performance is not that great, but then also for this time period, the performance falls between top 10 and top 20 percent of the drivers. <coughs> to conclude, we learn from the past behavior of taxi drivers to assist a cruising ta uh, taxi. Then uh, dynamic state abstraction was able to improve the performance. And the agent performs better than the top 10 percentile of the driver for most of the time period, except just a single time period where the performance was between 10 and 20 percent of the drivers. For the future work, we would like to perform the human experiment with actual uh, driver and we are doing that uh, in the coming, coming August, we are going to perform the experiment with the real driver. And another thing is that uh, while learning uh, here, the agent doesn't consider the presence of other learning agent present in the system. So it would be interesting to see how our uh, uh, method performs when there are, are uh, other selfish or cooperative agents present in the system who are also learning in the system. Thank you. Any questions? actually augmenting the data set uh, with some other information which actually doesn't have to deal with just locations and zones because it seems that in this taxi driving business it actually matters what is going on in the city like it's the ICAPS conference now so maybe uh, a lot of taxis should be cruising around uh, you know like CMU so maybe you should so I, I, it is just like the question so uh, like have you considered the future direction of research as uh, inputting more data in your learning database, which is not uh, about the that and, uh, Yeah. Know. So uh, the next yeah. work in the in the extension of this work, we we are considering the number of pres agents present in the system. But it would be interesting to include more details, like whether it's a downtown area or uh, maybe suburb area, uh, other more information would be interesting to see, but presently uh, we did not consider for this work. Other questions? Yes. Uh, so I have seen uh, in, uh, in the paper that the performance deteriorates at uh, peak time yes. from 5 to 8. So yes. I was wondering whether you can comment on, on that and how to improve performance in that period. Yeah, so uh, if even uh, uh, I think w what we feel is that during peak hour the num uh, demand is too high and it's available in each zone, every zone. So whatever action you take, you end up getting a passenger. So it doesn't help and uh, like uh, learning doesn't help much there. And other thing is when we compare it with the real driver, so we are comparing with the top lucky drivers which were able to perf uh, get a uh, passenger at every location. So I think these two are the reason we are not performing much okay. better in that uh, time period. Great, thanks. All right, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.